Ikaw Ikaw Nabihag Dukha Ikaw Nabisig Ang siyang Nagpubungkal Ikaw na pawis at dugo ang tanging puhunan Ikaw na bihag dukhat hinahamak Ikaw ay bayani dangal ng lipunan Itong tanikala ng pagkalipin mo Unti-unting dinudurog hanggang maging abo Itong nakalukob na agilang dayo Pilit iginugu ko Nang layay mapasayo Sa tuwilay taglay Iba yung pag-asa Buo ang hangaring Wakasan ang pagsasamantala Sa daluyong ng daang libong nag-aalsa Itatanghal kayong bayani Kayong magsasaka Sa tuwilay taglay Iba yung pag-asa Buo ang hangaring Wakasan ang pagsasamantala Sa daluyong ng daang libong nag-aalsa Itatanghal kayong bayani Kayong magsasaka At narinig niyo po ang magsasaka ng ika, magsasaka ikaw ay bayani ng buklod. Good afternoon international comrades and to our migrant and kababayans. Magandang gabi naman po sa inyo dyan sa Pilipinas. Mapagpalayang pagbati po para sa ating lahat. Narin po namin kinokondena ang pagpasa ng Duterte sa Erlo nito lamang nagdaang linggo. Hindi na talaga makayanan ng estado na pagtakpan ang mga kamalian at kagaguhan na pinagagawa nila sa taong bayan. Kaya ang gusto nila ay ituring ang mga mamamayan na lumalaban bilang terorista para patuloy na tumahimik at iisin na lang ang pagpapahirap ng rehemen ni Duterte. Kaya ilang araw pagkapasan nito ay ang pag-aresto sa labing isa na mamamayan lumalaban na nagpahayag ng pagkondena sa pagpasan ng anti-terror law. Amin din panawagan na palayain ang Kabuyaw 11, ang 11 na aktibitin pahayag ng pagprotesta sa Southern Tagalog. Sabay-sabay po natin ipanawagan ang pagpalaya sa kanila at pagpatuloy na pagbasura ng anti-terror law. Welcome to the National Democratic Online School. This is the Especial na Kurusong Masa Magsasaka Seria. Last week, we have discussed the, um, the Philippine society and revolution that uh, the People's Democratic uh, Revolution is the only solution. So if you have missed it, you can find it posted on our page, Anakbayan Europa. We are now back again at the National Democratic Online School with our new topic, which is Especial na Kurusong Masa on the Land Problem peasant class and agrarian revolution. Magpa, mag, magpapatuloy-tuloy pa rin po ito hanggang sa mga susunod din linggo. So make sure to notice on your calendars and cap, catch updates on our Facebook group and the line online. At patuloy po tayong mag ng ating mga kaibigan at kapamilya para makisali at makialam sa ating mga diskusyon. So if you have questions to Jo, just drop it on or the chat box in our Zoom. And later after the discussion, we will, be, we will be having a question and answer portion in which Tito Jo can answer your question. So um, let's start our discussion. Please welcome uh, Filipino writer, activist, internationalist, and MDFP consultant, Professor uh, Jo Masison. Hi, Tito. Mapulang pagbati po sa inyo. Kamusta po kayo? Mga revolusyonaryong pagbati sa iyo. Uh, Kaang hello uh, sa lahat uh, ng ating tagapakinig. Um, mabuting matunan ng pansin ang uh, paglagdan ni Duterte 
sa uh, uh, tinatawag kong uh, kanyang batas na state terror ng batas ng state terrorism no um bagabat nakatuon tayo sa uh, issue na yan meron din tayong pagkakataon ng pag-aralan ang uh, ang uh, kilusan ng mga magsasaka sa Pilipinas mga problema nila uh, at uh, kung paano lutasin ang problema ito dahil uh, mahalagang bahagi ito ng lipunan, mahalagang bahagi ng mga puwersa uh, para sa revolusyonarong pagbabago, para sa kilusang uh, patalsikin si Duterte at uh, isulong ang pakikibaga para sa pagbabago ng buong sistema na mapangapi at mapagsamantala. Salamat, Tito. Tito, our first question would be, who are the is their significance in the Philippine society? Uh, in English, one can play loose with synonymous terms like peasant, farmer, or planter for someone who tills the land. Or in Tagalog, magsasaka, magbubukid, or magbubunggal. In the same manner as you may alternately use the word worker, laborer, or wage earner for someone who sells his labor power and gets wages. But from the time of Marx to the present, in class analysis in the English language, the word peasant is used instead of farmer. The word peasant has the nuance of being serf, medieval or feudal times, or being in the main landless and poor tillers of the land. The word farmer uh, carries the nuance of being the owner of the land he tills or farms. Even landlords and uh, farm sometimes call themselves farmers or planters, but never do they call themselves peasant because uh, among, you know, land-owning people, especially landlords, um, uh, to uh, say that you're a peasant is that you have low formal education, you're boorish and so on. You're a clodhopper, no? Uh, but um, the... There is a precision in the word peasant, no? Uh, in the sense that uh, the landlord of farm capitalists will not uh, use it uh, to, eh? uh, to, to refer to him. We noticed that the Philippine reactionary government uses the word farmer to control the illusion that its bogus land reform program is a success and that the predominantly poor peasants among the peasants of various social strata have disappeared or are disappearing and have become uh, owner cultivators or owner farmers. There is a deliberate attempt to diminish drastically or even make the peasant class disappear, not only linguistically, but also statistically. In, the, in an earlier study session, I pointed out that the Philippine reactionary government has reduced the peasantry to only 22.9% of the labor force of 45 million being in agriculture, and the rest are in the service sector at 58%, and industry at 19.1%. With the 71.1% considered as working class, that makes the peasant class quite a small minority. The truth is that the industrial proletariat is far smaller than the peasant class, but the reactionary economists and statisticians detach the traditional seasonal farm workers, and odd jobbers from their peasant base. Actually, if you take into account uh, the labor force in industry and agriculture, uh, with uh, agriculture accounting supposedly uh, for 22.9%, and um, uh, workers uh, uh, are at uh, uh, 19 uh, 0.1%, the, the, the peasants are easily 54%. So it's, it's still the majority of uh, the labor force in the basic uh, productive sectors of the uh, Philippine economy. You know, the service sector uh, involves some amount of uh, productivity, but you know, the equipment there, uh, the services, uh, they are... Um, don't produce uh, products as solid as agriculture and industry. And the uh, service sector is very dependent 
on the equipment provided by the outside and it involves a lot of and it's the dumping ground for odd jobbers uh, the so-called informal economy um, is uh, is um, very much in that sector and uh, regular employment uh, day long work and or year round work uh, uh, there are so few of them but of course they are estimated to be there and uh, that minimizes the size of the industrial of the peasantry as well as the industrial proletariat um, so um, the uh, let me uh, continue uh, answering the question um, uh, after uh, uh, giving attention to the proportions of the peasantry um, and uh, in relation to other classes in uh, uh, Philippine society. Uh, the understatement of the size of the peasantry and the undervaluation of the share of agriculture at only 7.5% of GDP are calculated to conjure the illusion that the Philippines has become a newly industrializing economy and that the diminution of the peasantry has drastically reduced the ground for maneuver in the protracted people's war in the new democratic revolution. Uh, we cannot rely on the false categories and false estimates of the reactionary government. Original social research must be done to establish the facts. The Philippine re uh, reactionary government takes advantage of the fact that the neoliberal policy has bloated the service sector with extreme and attainable debt financing of non-reproducing equipment and consumer manufacturers and this honestly counts as employed in the service sector the great mass of odd jobbers from the surplus rural population in the so-called informal economy. And practically those recognized as peasants are merely the family heads, as if they were the workers individually registered and employed by non-agricultural enterprises, like the, the diminished number of regulars and the far greater number of casuals or five-month uh, or seasonal contractuals. The peasant class, mainly the poor and middle peasants, is highly significant in Philippine society because it comprises the biggest socioeconomic class and provides the food for itself and for the whole country and certain products for local processing, especially in the food and the beverage uh, industry, and uh, for export. It is the largest block of the most exploited urban and rural odd jobbers and unemployed who have increased in number due to of uh, industrial development and the dwindling of regular year-round employment in every sector of the economy. The peasant class is so important because it is the main force of the People's Democratic Revolution through People's War in the countryside until the revolutionary forces become strong enough to seize political power in the cities. Tito, can you discuss the different strata within the peasantry? Because, uh, as you know, there are farmers who have managed to own a few hectares of land and who have more comfortable life than the poor farmers. How did this different strata emerge? There are strata of the peasant class, the poor, middle, and rich peasants. The poor peasants do not own or have inadequate land and have to become tenants of the landlords and augment their income by being farm workers seasonally for the upper strata of the peasantry and for, for the plantations or do odd jobs in the uh, The middle uh, peasants in the, in the main own and till enough land for their own subsistence, although, as, uh, although the lower middle class also serve as farm workers for others or do urban odd jobs. The rich peasants own more than enough land for them for their subsistence, but they still till the land and um, hire uh, farm uh, workers 
uh, on their extra land as well as uh, uh, use their surplus income to engage in trading, small scale trading, um, and some enterprise, um, especially in handicrafts, or they use the income, their income, to buy additional land. Well, uh, peasants have the potential of becoming uh, uh, small landlords, no? uh, but uh, uh, they're still peasants in the sense that they still till the land. Although uh, the land, the, the, the farm work may be what you might call token, uh, but they contribute to production uh, to, uh, uh, to an extent that uh, make uh, them subsist. And, uh, uh, but as far as the extra land is concerned, that delivers extra income to them. The fact that the poor peasants are the majority of the peasants indicates that they have originated from the feudal system and that they continue to exist because of the persistence of feudal and semi-feudal relations of production and conditions in the countryside. Even when the landed states of landlords um, uh, become fragmented from generation to generation, the landlord class persists because some of the heirs expand their inherited shares and new landlords keep on arising and expanding their estates through purchase and the alienation of land from the public domain. The middle and rich peasants exist for various, uh, for various reasons, but are generally manifestation of the transition from feudal to semi-feudal conditions for the com or the combination of both. The rich peasants are sometimes called the rural bourgeoisie for owning property and using its surplus income to hire farm workers and engage in some small enterprise and si side occupation or in money lending. All right. Tito, one of the main problems that the peasants face is the problem of land ownership. They don't own the land that they till. So what is this origin of this land problem and how bad is it? Uh, even before the coming of Spanish colonialism, aside from communal land ownership, there was already private ownership of land by the ruling families in the Islamic sultanates in southwestern Mindanao and in the, in the patriarchal uh, or small-scale slave system in other parts of the archipelago. The Aliping Sagigilid and the Aliping Namamahai were put to work on the land by their owners. Uh, there were those who acted as tenants as well as those who worked on certain lands for the benefit of landlords in exchange uh, for rations or crop share. But the Spanish colonialists were the ones who systematically imposed feudalism on the widest scale. It started with the encomienda system which was a grant of extensive lands to the Spanish conquerors and bureaucrats for the purpose of tribute collection. The churches also accumulated land where they were established, but the largest church lands owned by the Spanish religious orders arose in connection with the production of export crops, such as tobacco, hemp, sugar, indigo, and so on. At the same time, the domestic ruling class of land-owning families called the Principalia increased their land holdings as domestic and foreign trade expanded from the late 18th to the 19th century. The, you know, this is the result of crop, spe uh, crop specialization in various regions. So, um, where the fire states concentrated on the export crops, the native landlords concentrated on the production of... Uh, uh, food crops. The system of haciendas was established during the Spanish colonial period. The land reform undertaken by the U.S. colonial regime against friar states was just enough to promote a semi-feudal economy and allow the peasants to move freely. Uh, you know, in Spanish colonial times, they could not move freely because uh, 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 held down to their villages because uh, that's the way to collect the head tax, no? Uh, although religious orders, um, the churches uh, 
accumulated land what they were established. And uh, uh, the uh, parish priest would, would, be, would form, would be one of the uh, triumvirate uh, that, uh, of, uh, uh, together with uh, the gobernadorcillo and the alferez, the chief of the uh, civil guards, that would ensure that the peasants do not leave uh, the area. Um, the system of haciendas was established during the Spanish colonial period. Um, and uh, despite the um, uh, land reform undertaken by the US colonial, uh, colonial regime, uh, it was just enough uh, to, um, to break down the heavy concentration of land, but then the peasants could not afford eh, the redistribution price, and so uh, the, the big uh, fire states uh, went to a multiplicity of uh, uh, native landlords, including former generals of the revolutionary movement, and you know, gobernadors, old uh, running gobernadorcillos uh, in the, the parish municipalities. Uh, although the land reform was carried out with the about purpose of distributing land to the peasants, they could not afford the redistribution price. The land or shifted only to the landlords and certain corporations, and the money paid to the religious corporations was invested um, in the big corporador bank of the Philippine Islands, of the Ayalas, you know? All right. Tito, what of exploitation and oppression do the farmers experience through this land problem? The main form of exploitation in the feudal system is the exaction of rent by the landlords from the tenants and making the latter perform menial service uh, to landlord families and unpaid labor on certain occasions, such as church and community uh, festivities. And you know, if you're a landlord, you can have as many servants as uh, you, you wish, because you can easily get the children of the tenants as your servants. Uh, because the arable lands are already designated or titled as private property of the church or certain families, the impoverished landless peasants have to become tenants or farm workers on the land of the landlords and the rich peasants. During the Spanish colonial period, the religious corporations and the landlords were notorious for abusing their political power by grabbing the land, even of the freemen or freeholders of land. The colonial state also required the peasant masses to render polo y servicio, public works, or else pay fines. And the triumvirate, as I've already uh, referred to, uh, the triumvirate of the parish priest, Gobernador Silio, and the chief of the civil guards, made sure that the landless peasants could not escape uh, their service of forced labor. Tito, who are the landlords and how did this few the landlords accumulate and monopolize these lands? First, among the native population, the religious corporations and native landlords had political power and could arbitrarily grab land from the powerless peasants. Second, the landlords bought more land at dirt cheap prices with the rent paid by tenants. Uh, third, they engaged in merchant usury operations by which the indebted peasants lost their land. The feudal forms of exploitation have extended to the current times. Um, you know, even where uh, there is still enough land for, you know, uh, peasants to open uh, new land, new agricultural land from the forest. Uh, they're always overtaken by landlords and uh, um, and uh, merchant users. As soon as the land become tillable, uh, the peasant uh, who, who who seem to have their free homesteads uh, would eventually lose the the homestead because the smart guys uh, always claim the land that they have uh, opened and developed. The so that's a repeated story from colonial times to uh, uh, neo-colonial times. The Cobarderosilius always came from the land-owning families. Uh, they were called the Principalia. They could arbitrarily claim, title, and put under tax declaration any large area of land legally considered as royal or public domain. 
This practice of land grabbing has continued until now under various guises such as pasture leases, preparatory to privatization, logging concessions, forest management agreements, and so on. Tito, the agriculture in the Philippines is still backward. Why are the landlords and the government not interested in developing tools and machineries to improve the way? How does this affect our farmers? Uh, so long as there is no genuine land reform or agrarian revolution and no national industrialization, the landlords will continue to exist, keep on accumulating land with the, red, with the rent paid to them, and retain the backward technological level of agriculture. There is no other way for most landlords to do but keep on collecting rent and practicing usury and using their income to accumulate land. If even if they have children who finish uh, uh, their uh, master or doctoral degree in business administration in Harvard, uh, uh, there are limits uh, to, you know, um, using the surplus uh, product from agriculture uh, because the country is, uh, is underdeveloped and uh, the big compradors and landlords restrict the growth of the whole economy. So uh, the, the surplus from agriculture is not, uh, uh, does not go into industrialization. The landlords have no interest in raising the technological level of agriculture because the landless peasants abound as cheap uh, source of labor power. However, the biggest landlords engage in export crop production and plantation and become big comprador bourgeois by performing the role of trading and financial agents of foreign monopoly capitalism. They own uh, haciendas as well as export import companies and commercial banks like the Ayalas and Covancos. You will notice that the biggest comprador bourgeois are also the biggest landlords or have huge interest in haciendas. The late Dandinko Huanco owned the big comprador San Miguel Corporation and also several haciendas in different parts of the Philippines. They adopt some amount of mechanization, but they do not go so far as to use harvester combines because there is an abundance of the traditional seasonal farm workers. They just save on capital outlays by using the extremely cheap labor power of the farm workers. And they are also afraid that social discontent would burst out if these farm workers are displaced by machines without any industrialization to absorb the displaced. During the time of Marcos Benedicto, his uh, crony Benedicto wanted the sugar landlords to buy harvester combines to replace the farm workers. But uh, they ultimately they thought it was cheaper to hire farm workers, and uh, it was wiser to avert intensified social conflict. Tito, how do the landlords, the big businesses owners, and imperialist agri-corporations team up to further profit from the exploitation and depressions of the peasants and farm workers? The teaming up of the landlords, the big compradors, or big uh, business owners, and the imperialist agri-corporations is most amply manifested in the operation of haciendas by the landlords for the production of export crops for sale to the imperialist agri-corporations. The landlords get their profits from the exploitation of the peasants. They have big corridor export-import trading firms to realize profits from trade with the foreign agri-corporations. With their foreign exchange income from the sale of export crops, they import to the Philippines foreign manufacturers for profitable sales to domestic wholesalers. They also own the big comprador banks for making the letters of credit in export-import transactions and thereby earning interest. Tito, in what ways do the landlord use to maintain their monopoly of land? In the history and current circumstances of the Philippines, the landlords acquire and maintain their monopoly of land by having political power in localities and at higher levels of the reactionary government. First, they, can, they gain control over vast tracts of land from the public domain under various legal pretexts and then acquire private ownership of the land under the pretext of having developed them. Second, they have devised inheritance laws 
so that land ownership is passed on from generation to another within the same family and through intermarriages of cousins and with other landlord families. This is what you might call, may call upper class or aristocratic prostitution of women. Third, the income drawn by the landlords from land is used to acquire more land. Tito, how do imperialists benefit from feudal exploitation of the farmers and what is its role in preserving feudalism? The imperialists benefit from the feudal exploitation of peasants and farm workers by buying the cheap export crops from the landlords and selling the manufacturers to the big comprador uh, landlord trading firms at higher prices. Aside from collaborating economically, the imperialists and landlords also do so uh, politically and militarily. The imperialists provide military support to the big comprador landlord capitalist bureaucrat capitalist state and the landlords rule the localities and provide the political base for said state. Imperialists are the sources of the weapons used by the reactionary state in the feudal campaigns to destroy the revolutionary movement and preserve the feudal and semi-feudal system of exploitation. Tito, before we proceed to our short break, no, um, what kind of policies and attitude does the government have in resolving the land problem? The reactionary state or government is the class rule of the big compradors, landlords, and bureaucrat capitalists. They are fundamentally against genuine land reform aimed at solving the land problem. They keep on carrying out the one bogus land reform after the other. But because the land expropriated from certain landlords is overpriced, the poor peasants cannot afford to pay for the exorbitant redistribution price of the land. You know, uh, the, the so-called land reform beneficiaries, to the extent of 95%, they, uh, um, they, uh, they, do not, they cannot pay uh, for their... Uh, uh, for the amortization of the land allo uh, allocated to them. And so they're uh, indebted to the land bank and um, uh, uh, other guys, other smart guys uh, uh, who wish to become landlords or already landlords uh, buy the land, buy the right to own the land from them. The land usually ends up in the hands of landlords and other entities uh, who acquire the land for real estate development and other non-agricultural purposes. All right, Tito. We will now then proceed to our short break. So um, please, um, while we are on break, uh, share this um, live video so we could um, have more further audience. No? Um, for our break, please listen to um, Sakada ng Buklod.
Sabayin natin kahit may kalayuan Ang paaliwalas na daan Tatlong mundok man ang hadlan Sa ating panuroonan Pugkain natin hanggang sa mawalan Tayo Kalayaan mo na dito We are now back sa ating um sa ating discussion ano so binabati po namin ang ating mga manonood mula sa Quebec Canada Australia. Sa Saudi, binabati din namin ating mga kababayan dyan sa Anakbayan, sa Sargent, and Kadamay Cavite, and our audience from Bulacan and other parts of the Philippines. Tito, we are going back to our discussion. Ano? The Republic of the Philippines has created policies and institutions that they say will help the farmers. For example, the CARP and the CARPER or DENR or DAR. Do these policies and institutions really help farmers? Uh, these policies and institutions do not carry out or promote genuine land reform <clears throat> and uh, rural development for the benefit of the peasant masses. They uh, benefit the landlords, big compradors, and bureaucrat capitalists. Does this mean the government of the Republic of the Philippines are part of the problem of the farmers that further oppress and exploits them? Yes, the reactionary government is the problem. The, uh, the peasant uh, masses, the government belongs to the landlords and other exploiting classes. It is therefore um, a big problem, an instrument against the uh, uh, peasant masses. And uh, uh, it ensures the uh, uh, continuing uh, role and um, a feudal and semi-feudal relations in the countryside between the exploiting class, uh, called the landlord class, and uh, uh, the peasant class. All right. Tito, how is the struggle of fisher folks and the struggle of the farmers related? The struggle of fisher folks is related to the peasants. The fisher folks are subject to exploitation and oppression by owners of fish pens who play a role similar to that of the landlords and by owners of um, uh, large fishing boats or trawlers who act like hacienda owners and farm capitalists. Sometimes peasants also augment their income as fisher folks in rivers, lakes, and marine coast and uh, suffer the same exploitation and oppression suffered by fisher folks. Tito, can you discuss how the military, the church, the justice system, the reactionary associations contribute to the further exploitations of the peasant class? Um, <laughs> The military and the police are bound by the state uh, to protect the landlords against the peasant masses demanding genuine land reform or fighting for agrarian revolution. They target the peasant leaders and mass activists in counter-revolutionary campaigns of oppression. Uh, the dominant uh, church 
is an institution that owns land and is socially close to the landlords, who are its uh, big donors. Many of the church leaders are conservative and support the landlords, even as uh, quite a number of them have social conscience, um, belong to the Christians for national liberation, and support the peasant masses, because these are poor people who deserve justice. The justice system is based on laws designed to serve the interest of the big corporate landlord state and the exploiting classes of big compradors and landlords against the toiling masses of workers and peasants. Uh, reactionary associations are instruments of the landlord class and other exploiting classes to control and influence the exploited classes in favor of the exploiting classes. They are the privilege of the landlord class to exploit the peasant masses. Tito, the farmers in Hacienda Luisita, for example, have exhausted all the to fight for their lands. They have filed cases in the Supreme Court, conducting, conducted mass protests, joined dialogues with even late Dending Kuwanko, and have also seen a terrible massacre called the Hacienda Luisita Massacre. Despite of this, almost do not have their own land. These struggles are experienced not just by Hacienda Luisita farmers, but also farmers all over the country. What choice do you think they have left, and how can we, as regular citizens, help them with their struggle? Farmers in Hacienda Lusita must continue to fight for their rights and interests legally and politically. I would not be surprised if some of them join the armed revolutionary movement in order to be able to undertake effective actions against those who frustrate or violate their rights. The revolutionary movement has supported the struggle of the peasants and farm workers in Agenda Lucita and elsewhere. We can and should support their struggle by exercising of freedom of speech and assembly. We should do the same in favor of the poor peasants and farm workers all over the country. Tito, what do you think is the solution to all these land problems? The revolutionary movement offers the best and most effective solution to the land problem in the Philippines. The Communist Party of the Philippines declares in its program for a people's democratic revolution that the main content of the revolution, democratic revolution, is to satisfy the peasant hunger for land through agrarian revolution. It provides two stages in the agrarian revolution. The first stage is to carry out the minimum land reform program, where the revolutionary movement has just started to take roots among the peasant masses. It means reducing the land rent, eliminating usury, and reducing interest rates raising farm wages, setting their fair prices for farm products at the farm gate, and raising production in agriculture and sideline occupations. However, whenever already possible, the land grabbed by landlords and corporations can be uh, taken back uh, <clears throat> and returned immediately to the peasants and indigenous communities. The land of despotic landlords can also be confiscated and distributed free to the peasants. The second stage is to carry out the maximum land reform program where the revolutionary forces, the people's army, and the organized masses through their local organs of political power have the capability to do so on a wide scale. It means realizing the agrarian revolution. It consists of confiscating the land distributing it free to peasant masses, setting fair prices for the agricultural products farm gate, and raising production in agriculture and sideline occupations through rudimentary cooperation among the households in a community. The reaction of the landlord is expected to rise, and the peasant masses are ready to fight and win. The People's Court is ready to try despotic landlords and meet out severe punishment to those with blood debts. Tito, how do we unify the different strata under the peasant class? Uh, there is a general revolutionary class line for the anti-feudal United Front to unify the peasant class. It is for the working class and the CPP, the party of the proletariat, to rely mainly 
on the poor peasants and farm workers who need the agrarian revolution most. Win over the middle peasants and neutralize the rich peasants uh, in order to isolate and destroy the power of the landlord, especially the despotic ones who use violence against the peasant masses. Care is taken not to offend, but not to kowtow to the rich peasants. They are allowed to keep their extra land and income above subsistence if they comply with the fair requirements of the revolutionary movement. A distinction is also made between despotic landlords who commit crimes against the people and enlightened landlords who comply with the policy of land reform or agrarian revolution of the revolutionary movement. Tito, what is the agrarian revolution and how it is? How is it being waged? At the moment, the first stage of the agrarian revolution is being, being carried out in most areas of the revolutionary movement. But uh, land grabbed by landlords and corporations uh, from the indigenous communities and the poor peasants are returned to them as soon as possible. The despotic landlords is confiscated from them and uh, distributed free to the, uh, to the poor peasants and the lower middle peasants. And the agrarian revolution is made possible by the people's war along the line of the People's Democratic Revolution. <clears throat> In peace negotiations with the reactionary government, the National Democratic Front of the Philippines has offered, has offered a program of genuine land reform and national industrialization as a socioeconomic basis for a just uh, peace agreement. The, uh, the program, <coughs> um, excuse me, the program can be financed uh, by the trillions of uh, U.S. dollars worth of gas and oil that can be extracted from the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines in the West Philippine Sea. But the Duterte regime has refused the offer of the NDFP and has decided to terminate the peace negotiations. It thinks it, that it can destroy the revolutionary movement uh, in order to satisfy U.S. imperialism and at the same time enrich the Duterte dynasty and its uh, Dabao-based uh, uh, Chinese cronies by selling out to Chinese imperialism the sovereign rights of the Filipino people in the West um, uh, Philippine Sea. Uh, so uh, you see uh, how traitorous and stupid uh, Duterte is instead of using the natural riches in the exclusive economic zone for land reform and national industrialization, he would rather eh, uh, sell this out to, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to China. And in return, he gets, you know, uh, uh, rewards for himself uh, and his, uh, his young mates far uh, below what... Uh, the Filipino people can get by uh, exploiting uh, the resources for the purpose of uh, genuine land reform, uh, national industrialization, and making a better, huh? a better uh, society for the entire Filipino people. Thank you so much for having um, this discussion with uh, with us, Tito. And um, we will, uh, to our audience, we will now be opening our question and answer um, the floor for question and answer portion. So if you have questions in mind, drop it down on the comment box on our live video. And to our um, audience from Zoom, you can drop it on the chat box, and Tito Jo can answer it after our break. And um, for our break, uh, please watch Lupa at Justicia. This is a brief report on the implementation of government mandated land distribution in in this in the historic and highly controversial Hacienda Luisita sugar estate controlled by the family of the Philippine president Benigno Noynoy Aquino III with the expiration of the government's long running comprehensive agreement reform program which is CARP on June 30 2014 Luisita farm workers under the alliance of Ambala continue to seek genuine land reform and justice we will be back Okay.
natin yung Hacienda Luisita. Total land distribution, uh, 14-0. Yung mga galaw na, may, may, yung, yung kine-claim ng, ng mga ralista na ibigay na to date, 87.5% .5 of the monumenting work has been completed. Sa kabila ng mga batas at programang agraryo ng gobyerno at ng desisyon ng Korte Suprema para ipamahagi ng Hacienda Luisita, Bakit naglalagablab pa rin ang panawagan ng mga manggagawang bukid para sa tunay na reforma sa lupa at hustisya? Kompleto na raw ang pamamahagi sa asyenda. Pero bakit tadtad ng bakod at bantay ang mahigit isang libong ektaryang ng lupa? Mahigit anim na libong ektaryang tubuhan sa Tarlac City, Concepcion at Lapaz sa probinsya ng Tarlac. Sampung barangay ng mga manggagawang bukid na nakapalibot sa Central Azucarera de Tarlac. Kasinlawak ng pinagsamang area ng siyudad ng Maynila at Makati. At isang mahaba, masalimuot na kasaysayan ng pakikibaka laban sa pang-aapi at pagsasamantala. Sa huling mga taon ng pananakop ng Kastila, Naging bahagi ang asyenda ng tabakalera ni Don Antonio Lopez ang nagbinyag sa asyenda bilang Luisita mula sa ngala ng kanyang asawa. Noong 1957, napasakamay ni na Jose Coang Cusinior ang Central Azucarera de Tarlac gamit ang pautang mula sa GSIS at garantiya ng Banko Sentral. Sa kondisyong matapos ang sampung taon ay pamamahagi na ang lupa sa mga magsasaka. Hindi tinupad ng mga kuwang ko Aquino ang kasunduang ito. Gamit ang kapangyarihang pampulitika na mula rin pangunahin sa yamang napipiga sa tubuhan at asukarera, nagawa ng mga kuwang ko Aquino na panatilihin ang kontrol sa asyenda at patuloy na pagkakitaan ang pawis at dugo ng mga manggagawang buhi. 1985, nagdesisyon ang Manila Regional Trial Court para sa distribusyon ng lupa. Ngunit hindi ito may papatupad. 1986, May lulukluk bilang Pangulo ang isang Kuwang Aquino. Gamit ang poder at mismong batas, tiniyak ni Corazon Aquino na mananatili sa kanyang pangulong Luisita. Habang nangangako na abot kamay na ng mga magsasaka ang hostisyang pandipunan sa bisa ng Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program. Eh, noong po man eh, hindi naman naniwala ang kilosang magigit ng Pilipinas na ang huwad na carp ay magpapairal ng hostisyang pandipunan. Dahil sa unang-unang naging pinipisyaryo ng huwad na carp ay ang uh, mga pamilya ko ang Aquino, sa particular ang Hacienda Lisita na iniiwas nila o itinaka sa pisikal na pumahagi ng lupa sa pumagitan ng isang mapanlinlang at kontra magkasakang uh, stock distribution option. Idiniklarang mga kasosyo raw o stockholder ng Hacienda Luisita Incorporated ang mga manggagawang bukid. Subalit lumala ang kahirapan at tanggalan sa trabaho. Umabot na lamang sa siyam na piso at 50 sentimos ang karaniwang sahod ng manggagawang bukid sa Luisita. Hanggang sa nagpas siyang lumaban ang libo-libong mamamayan. Nobyembre sa East, 2004, itinayo ang barikada sa makasaysayang welgang bayan sa Asyenda Luisita. Higit pang inhustisya at walang habas na karasa ng isinagot ng pamilya Juanco Aquino. <tinyo> Biyembre 16, 2004, sa harap mismo ng asukarera, naganap ang masaker na kumitil sa buhay ng pitong magbubukid. Sunod-sunod pa ang naging pamamaslang sa mga lider magsasaka at mga taga sa porta. Ngunit din natapos ang laban hanggang sa katiga ng Presidential Agrarian Reform Council noong 2005 ang panawagan para sa distribusyon ng lupa. Bilang pagigiit sa kanilang karapatan, Pinusisyonan ng mga manggagawang bukid ang mga lupain at inilunsad ng kampanyang bungkalan sa harap ng patuloy na maniobra at pandarahas. Sa gitna ng sustenidong pakikibaka ng mga manggagawang bukid, inilabas ng Korte Suprema nitong Abril 24, 2012 ang makasaysayang desisyon sa Asyenda Luisita. Ngunit isa na namang Kuwangko Aquino ang nakaupo sa Malacanang. 
Binitiwan na raw ni Benigno Aquino III ang kanyang interes at sosyo sa asyenda. Ngunit ang kanyang gobyerno ang nagpapahintulot ng patuloy na panloloko, pandarahas at pangamkam ng kanyang pamilya sa pamamagitan ng huwad na pamamahagi ng lupa sa Asyenda Luisita. Lubhang piniliit ang saklaw ng lupang ipamamahagi sa mga magubukid. Alim na libo apat na raan at pitumputatlong ektarya ang kabuang sukat ng Asyenda. Ngunit apat na libo siyam na raan at labing limang ektarya lang ang idineklarang agrikultural at ipinaloob sa SDO. Ibig sabihin, mahigit isang libo limandaang ektarya ang inilihi sa reforma sa lupa kahit ang mga ito ay patuloy na tinamnan ng tubo. Inilusot sa illegal na land conversion ang iba't ibang bahagi ng asyenda. Sa desisyon ng Korte Suprema, ibinawas ang walumpung ektarya ng lupang inilaan sa SCTEX at ang kontrobersyal na limang daang ektarya na ibinenta ng HLI. Binungkal ng mga magsasaka ang tibangwang na lupa, ngunit dahas ang sagot ng mga kuwangko at ng RCBC. Napapalibutan na ng mga bakod at bantay ang ipinuslit na lupa na nasa kontrol pa rin ng RCBC, LIPCO at LRC. Sa maanumalyang survey ng Department of Agrarian Reform, mahigit apat na rang ektarya pa ang tinapyas para di umano sa mga kalsada, kanal, firebreak at iba pa. Lumilitaw na ang mahigit isang libong ektarya ng agrikultural na lupa ay nananatili sa pangalan ng mga korporasyong Kuwangko Aquino, gaya ng Tadeco, LRC at CAT. Tumataging ting na apat na raan pitumput isang milyong piso mula sa pampublikong pondo ang ibinayad ng gobyerno sa mga Kuwangko bilang kompensasyon para sa lupang saklaw ng huwad na distribusyon ng lupa ng dar. Bakit ang Kuwangko pambabayan magpera na sila? Ang dami na nilang kinuhang... Tubo, lipak-lipak na. Laki pa ng utang sa amin ng pamilya ko, Wangko. Yung 1.33 billion na dapat ibigay sa amin, hindi binayaran. Dapat inuna kami bayaran para lang may pamumunan kami sa pagsasaka. Upang masiguro ang pagbabayad ng 30 taong amortisasyon sa gobyerno, pilit na pinapirma ang mga benepisyaryo sa APFU. Hindi na dapat kami magbayad sa lupa. Pawis at tugunan namin ang Kinuha ng pamilya ko, Wangko. Nagdulot ng dislokasyon ng magulong alokasyon ng mga lote sa pamagitan ng tambyolo. Hindi kinilala ng dar ang bungkalan at ang panawagan ng mga magbubukid para sa kolektibong pag-aari at libreng pamamahagi ng lupa. Sa ginawang tambyolo ng dar, hindi makatarungan talaga yun. Halimbawa ang barangay Baditi, ginamit na yung tambyolo. Tinambyolo nila pumunta naman sa Pando, sa Magilog. Sino naman ang magsasaka sa kalayo? 150 ang pamasahe. Back and forth, sabi mo na 300. Sa araw-araw, mag-umpisa ka pa lang sa pagsasaka. Ano pa ang kikitain ng mga magsasaka? Wala na. Itinulak ng dar ang mga benepisyaryo sa pagpaparenta at pagbibenta ng lupa. Habang nakatali ang mga magbubukid sa mga kondisyong hahantong sa diskwalifikasyon at pagkansela ng kloa. Mabilis na binabawi ng mga Kuwangko Aquino ang kontrol sa lupa gamit ang kanilang mga ahenteng plantador at pinanser. Sa halip na maging katibayan ng kanilang karapatang magbungkal, ang mga dokumento mula sa dar ay nagsisilbing kolateral sa ilegal na sistemang ariendo. Habang ipinagmamalaki ng gobyerno ang tagumpay sa pamamahagi ng lupa, agresibong pinapalaya sa mga magsasaka sa tulong ng dar, pulis, militar at lokal na korte. Tuloy-tuloy ang intimidasyon at pananakot sa mga magubukid, pambubugbog, pangaaresto, patong-patong na gawagawang kaso, pagbuldoser ng pananim, panununog ng mga kubo, pagbabakod at pagbabantay ng armadong gwardiya at pwersa ng Estado sa daan-daang ektaryang lupa na dapat ipamahagi sa mga magsasaka. Walang lupa, walang ustisya, panluloko, pandarahas, pangangamkam. Carp at ang carper ay dambuhalang panggagansyo na bumibiktima sa mga magsasaka sa buong bansa. Ito rin ang nagsisilbing panabing sa talamak na korupsyon sa gobyerno, gaya ng limpak-limpak na kompensasyon sa mga mga ngamkam na gaya ng mga kawangko at pandarambong sa pork barrel para sa mga peking NGO at palpak na proyektong pangagrikultura. Sa ganitong ka, malaking kabiguan ng huwad na carp, makaraan ang dalawampunan na pagpapatupad ito at maging na apat na pong taong uh, pagpapatupad ng huwad na Marcos de Lipong, talagang uh, kinakailangan natin ngayon ang magpatupad ng isang bagong batas 
para sa tunay na reforma agrario. Isang gobyerno, isang regimen na nag hindi naglilingkod sa interes ng mga mamayan, ang masang magkasaka, manggagawa at iba pang sektor uri sa lipo ng Pilipino ay may makatwiran at malakas na dahilan para patalsikin ang isang kontra mamamayan, basista at pahirap na regimen. Ano man ang gawin nila ng pamilya ko, Wangko, nilalaban at nilalaban namin na yung lupa dahil yan, ang lupa ay buhay namin mong gagawin. And we are now back to our National Democratic Online School, for, which is, uh, we are now on the part of question and answer portion. So the floor is still open. If you have question in mind, just uh, drop it down our comment box. And on our Zoom, on our audience from Zoom, just drop it on the chat box. So we, uh, Tito jo, so we can relay it to Tito Jo and Tito Jo can answer it. Tito Jo, the first question from our audience is, um, ano ang kalagay? Ng, ng mga magsasaka sa ilalim ng rehimeng U.S. Duterte at ano ang magiging epekto ng anti-terror bill sa kanila? Malaking ano, kapahamakan ang ano, da, uh, sa uring magsasaka dahil sa maling uh, patakaran ni Duterte yung sa panahon ng COVID-19 nag-take advantage siya lalong nagnakaw siya kasama niya yung mga mga sungot niyang militar at iba pang krone niya uh, yung kumita sila sa ano kunwari nagbigay ng ayuda na hindi naman na ibinigay pagkatapos overpriced yung mga purchases at yung ano hanggang ngayon hindi na ipapaliwanag paano naubos yung 275 uh, uh, billion pesos at kung paano uh, ginagamit yung sinabing inutang ng pagkalaki-laki para daw labanan yung COVID. Uh, anyway, ito ay pick, nag-pick yung, ano, yung corruption na, ng Duterte regime. Anong bunga nito? Bankrap ang ekonomiya. Ah, mga tao pinigil na magtrabaho at uh, ginuto mga tao. Uh, eh, hindi, hindi binigay yung ayuda man para magkaroon sila ng relief. At uh, uh, bankrap ang gobyerno, ibig sabihin, lalong walang magagawa ang gobyerno para matulungan ang magsasaka. Alimbawa, 
may magkakaroon ba ng pera para sa land reform? Ano mang klase ng land reform? Wala. Magkakaroon ba ng pera para matulungan ang produksyon ng mga, mga, manggagawa, mga magsasaka? Wala. Lalo kung dati, wala. Lalo wala ngayon. Uh, so, um, meron tayong ano, labis-labis na uh, mandarambong na mga nagahari sa Pilipinas at uh, imbis na ano sila uh, matakot ba nagtatapang-tapang at uh, tinatakot nila masa kaya nagadap sila ng ano uh, yung tinatawag kong state terrorism uh, uh, law uh, kunwari anti-terrorism daw pero sila mga ter- tunay na terorista uh, si Duterte kanyang mga uh, asungot na militar at polis sila ang abusado. Ang uh, pangunahing pakay ng uh, ng, ng, ano to, ng uh, uh, state terror law na yan ay para uh, labanan ang kilusan revolusyonaryo. Ang nila para labanan ang kilusan revolusyonaryo ay yung patahimikin nila ang mga nasa urban areas. Sino mang masuspitsa o masabi nilang may kaugnayan sa uh, kilusan revolusyonaryo, imamas arrest ha? at uh, ipagpapatay pa. Ganon din ang ginagagawin. Dati nang ginagawin, lalo silang ano yun, uh, papatay ng mga tao para takutin. Ngayon, uh, so lalo nga ano yun, yung oppression, yung Uh, pagkape ng masang magsasaka lalong titimde um, yung uh, uh, sabay yung hirap sa basa buhay uh, yung kawalan ng ano yung pagkasira ng hanap buhay at mga pagkakataon na makapagproduce ng malaki para uh, mapakinabangan nila yung kanilang produksyon uh, dapa no? pagkatapos Uh, kanyan kasama na yung paggamit ng bomba uh, at uh, barel para takutin at patayin ang mga magsasaka. Lalo na sa mga lugar na no, yung gustong agawin yung lupa para sa mga mining, logging at plantation company. Yung mga uh, indigenous people at uh, mga poor peasants na nasa mga liblib na lugar ano yun, um, titirahin nila para ma-alaw pa. Uh, kung gayon, lalong lalaban ang masa at ang kilo sa revolusyonaryo uh, sa uh, kalunsuran at kanayunan ay uh, susulong. Akala, hindi itong mga nasa kapangyarihan, pag ano, tinakot nilang sabay yung mga, uh, mga critics, mga social activists, Uh, at iba pa, pati na itong mga uh, pinaka-respetadong uh, tao, mga ubi, hanggang obispo at mga abogado, tinatakot nila pag sila ay nagsalita laban sa state terror law ay kasama na rin sa mga terrorist. Yan ang, uh, yan. Ngayon, ang palangin nila kapag pinagsabay nila yung atake, sunan at kanayunan, masisili ang nila yung re- revolutionary movement. Ngayon, in, <laughs> kaya ano, gumawa ko ng recollection sa isang statement aba nung si Marcos na nakot ang kinusang revolusyonaryo tulad ng KM may pag-iingat samantalang nagpapaigting ng laban no nung uh, nagsuspension of the writ ay eh, talagang mali- maliwanag na may balak si Marcos na mag-martial law mag uh, magpasista lubos ang pasista patuloy yung ano Uh, legal mas tagal pero may paghahanda na yung mga namimiligrong mga aktivista ano na hana, sila ay nagpunta na sa underground at uh, city underground at naghanda na na sumama sa uh, armadong pakikibaka sa kanayonan so um, yun ang nangyari kumbaga yung CPP at MPA hundreds lang sila hanggang uh, 19 uh, Uh, 70 ah? yung uh, by 1971 ano eh dalawang libo na by uh, uh, yung kwan ha may ibig sabihin yung parte uh, dalawang libo uh, 1972 uh, uh, apat na libo yung ibig sabihin yung pananakot at uh, pandarahas 
yung violence ng ano ni, ni Marcos hindi nakapigil sa kilos sa revolutionary kundi lalong nagtula sa mga tao na sumama sa revolutionary movement um kaya ganyan din mangyayari uh, palagi ko ngayon dahil nandiyan nandiyan yang lintik na uh, state tech, um marami na naghahanda yung pinaka nasa peligrosong kalagayan ay handa na sila Adam Putin na lang at pa, uh, gugulpihin at papatayin yun so pagdating naman sa magsasaka kawawa sila na kasi um, ang opresyon o ang ano dahilan ng oppression ay exploitation yung under the state uh, terror law ano yung um, itong mana sa kapangyarihan gusto nila ng kwan mangaga o ng mga rarian mula sa kapwa nilang nasa ula, ula yung hindi nila kasabwat no uh, makikinabang diyan yung Duterte dynasty at yung mga krone pero yung mga karibal nila sa o kaya hindi uh, wala sa kanilang uh, uh, barkadahan sa kanilang na yung mga kapwa nilang mayayaman agawan ng kapang ng ano pag kinuha ni Marcos si Duterte nung umpisa niya yung kone ABS-CBN uh, gustong agawin gusto na si Dennis Oy gagamitin na no magmamayare ng uh, ng ano equipment at mga personnel ng ano ng uh, ABS-CBN uh, <coughs> ganyan ng sa lahat ng tipo ng negosyo, mga agaw si Duterte. Pero hanggang sa mababang antas ng lipunan, um, militar at pulis, ano rin yan? Kikita. Ah? Mag-extort din. Manghuhuli ng tao. Pagkatapos, eh, uh, kung hindi ka nagbayad, o kaya hindi mo binigay yung gusto nilang yung, uh, kunin sa'yo, ano yan? Uh, I-detain ka o papatayin ka pa. Kaya, yung lahat ng mga birdugo na yan, pati na yung magmula sa itaas hanggang sa baba, uh, gustong kumita. At yung abuso, walang, ano, walang uh, tigil. So, kung ganyan, kaya nilang gawin na marunong magsalita kung may mga karapatan. No? Uh, doon pa kaya sa countryside, no? lalo nung abusong malaki ang aabutin uh, ng mga magsasaka. Kaya, magig po uh, ang Pilipinas eh, ma, ma, mapapasay lalim sa isang mabagsik na na kalagayan barahas at uh, uh, mapangape uh, pero yan naman ang magtutulak sa masa na lumaban at tulad ni Marcos yung kwan eh yung sa kalaunan bumagsak siya eh. pati sa loob ng militar mayroong kwan eh Uh, kasi ano naman eh uh, habang mga pinaka malapit kay, Mar- kay Duterte kikita mga general lalo na may mga elemento dyan na uh, yung, yung ayaw nila yung ganon no? kaya sa kalaunan pag nakita nila yung masa uh, lumalaban na ano yun uh, they will withdraw support from Duterte ganyan nangyari kay Marcos etong si Duterte mas mahinang klase sisiw Alam, matakaw, no? At uh, sa loob lang ng apat na tao, maraming ninakaw at maraming pinapatay. Pero mo, tatlong pung libo na mahihirap. Mahilig, duwag yan. Ang pinapatay niya yung mahihirap, no? yung walang laban, no? So, ngayon, nagambisyoso, pati malaki, na karibal niya sa loob ng kanyang uring, mapangape, eh, eh kwan, gusto niya, <laughs> gusto niya, uh, agawan ng, 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 uh, Ari-arihan, no? At uh, gusto niyang, ano, lapatan ng kanyang pagkaberdugo. Aba, eh, mayayari siya na mas, mag- mas madali. Um, at saka, alam ng tao na si Duterte buwang, sirang ulo, mentally, uh, and um, uh, worst of all, morally. Eh? Walang, ano, walang moral scruples, walang prinsipyo, at uh, at sa likuran niya, mismo yung mga kasama niyang mandarambong, lino, 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 pinagtatawa na si Duterte uh, dahil nagagamit nila. At, um, pero nakikita nila na si Raulo. So, ano yon Wala yung ano, respeto na nakukuha. Nakapambola si Marcos nung ano eh, sa mga abang panahon. Kasi may posturang ano, may posturang statesman. Pero ano yan eh? 
uh, sa kalaunan yung kanilang kanyang pamamangsista, ano rin, it worked against him. Ganyan si Duterte. Um, ganito lang, masahan natin kay Duterte ngayon. E ang ganito, <laughs> alam ninyo, uh, hindi ba binibati nung araw anong gagawin niya tungkol sa uh, tinawag na anti-terrorism law? Kung, ano, kung siya ay uh, magmatigas ng ulo, porque siya nag-railroad ng bill, hindi siya makakatras, pipirman niya. O, magkunwari na, no, hindi lang siya may responsibility eh, sa, sa, sa bill maging law, he would let it, you know, lapse into law. No? Pero gago, talaga mayabang. Eh, pina, parang pinapakita niya, pinaninindigan niya yung kalokohan niya. O, oh, di yun, eh, mabuti. Yung solo niya, yung kan, culpability, yung culpability. Ganyan rin, ganyan pinagpo, ganyan pinagpo, maraming ano, nagpupusta ko nung gagawin ni Duterte. Eh, siya ba ay, eh, dahil lasing na siya sa kapangyarihan, ano kayong gagawin niya? Eh, lalampas siya sa term of office ng 2022, magpasistang diktadura, o kaya, pipiliin niya lang yung successor niya, para yung successor niya maging protector niya. Okay? <laughs> para niya <yung> ko... <laughs> Pinakamaganda, subukan niya ano, maging diktador. Yung bang uh, pal, abang, charter change, siya na mismo yung kuhan, magdiktador at uh, lalampas sa uh, ano, term limit niya. Um, kaya kung masusunod yung kanyang kuhan, yung sira ng ulo at yung kanyang pagkasakim, baka ano yung gayahin na si Marcos na ano, bago magtapos yung term niya, uh, ano yun, may charter change na nakahanda naman yung ano eh yung charter ano uh, amendments lang so ganyan uh, so ano uh, ang Pilipinas at sambayan ng Pilipino humaharap sa mas marami pang uh, uh, paghihirap uh, mula sa rehimen nito pero si, uh, itong uh, uh, mga itong tirano tyrant hindi niya namamalayan na naglilikha siya ng mga kondisyon uh, para yung masang Pilipino na ginagalit na niya ay uh, uh, magbabalikwas at uh, ititilapon siya sa basura ng kasaysayan. Thank you, Tito. Next question, Tito, from our audience. How come rice is one of our main crops but we still have a shortage of rice? Where do our agricultural products go? Uh, alam ninyo, ang kwan, ang rice trading, uh, the landlords are in charge of production. Uh, pero, uh, the land, some of the landlords act as big compradors. And then there are also, there is also a group of traders, no? Na, na, uh, specialized in, uh, tra in trading or specifically uh, rice trading. Chinese yan, mostly Chinese, mga cartel. Um, hindi sila hindi sila yung kwan uh, in charge ng production tulad ng landlords pero specialized sila ng trading sa loob ng bansa they create scarcities para in periods of scarcity artificial uh, shortages so that um, yung, they can make uh, profits from the shortages inside the country no? meron naman din yung correlation ng importation the under neoliberal policy ni neoliberal policy ang minamanipula ng mga Chinese traders ngayon yung export of rice uh, na pinapayagan sa ilalim ng ano neoliberal policy kunwari no itatax yung ano merong tarification etc but actually uh, that is another expression for letting in rice as much as the uh, rice big compradors are concerned no so um um, shortages can be uh, can be created uh, as far as rice local local rice production is concerned. Ali na ako yung balita, wow, bus na yung NF National Food uh, Authority na dapat uh, namimili ng rice sa presyo na hindi makasira kung hindi maka pagmantine o makapag uh, improve ng rice production. Hindi sa sabi hindi hindi bumili, oh. Um, nagkulang yung ipon yung ibinili no? 
So, rice ngayon, uh, papayagan na manggagaling sa, no? sa Vietnam, Thailand. So, uh, ito, uh, yung nabibili sa mo mas murang halaga dahil gumagawa uh, more efficient methods of agricultural production, lalo ng Thailand, no? E sa kwan, sa ganun din, efficient of production kahit na low, lower level of technology sa Vietnam. Anyway, yung, yung ano, yung uh, uh, kikita yung mga big compradors sa importation. Kaya naman, um, sa balance ng imports at sa local rice production, na ano, kapag... Uh, relatively cheaper yung galing sa abroad, papatayin niya ngayon yung ano, yung uh, sa Pilipinas. Ayun. So, merong kwan, artificiality ng shortages um, on both sides. Um, so, especially at the expense of local rice production, dyan ano, nanliliit. Yung NFA na may katungkulan na ano, ng rice para to assure the uh, proper price level uh, to encourage peasants to produce, including their landlords, no? yung to produce rice. Ano? So, meron ding mga factors na nakapag-reduce uh, sa, sa rice production. In certain areas, Uh, mag, uh, gagawa ng bioethanol production in best na rice o kaya uh, sa maraming lugar magpapagagawa ng mga real estate uh, projects uh, so uh, tapos eh, ano yung talaga yung gobyerno pabaya walang ano wala yung pag-atupag sa principle na kailangan may food sovereignty ka, may food ano, sufficiency ka uh, as at the base of your economy. Your agriculture is the base of your economy. Uh, it should be able to assure you uh, to give, provide the food and even raw materials for uh, uh, processing. So, without an overall plan, yung basta titira ang mga nasa kapangyarihan kung saan sila kikita in complicity, huh? in collaboration with the uh, with the big comparators. Ano yan, eh? laro ng ano yan, bureaucrat capitalist in power and ano yan, eh? uh, big comparators, mga big traders. So, ganyan, dyan na ipit yung local rice production and therefore, real shortage is emerging. Kasi, uh, yung rice importation is now the effect of no pressing down local production and the government, the NFA is, uh, no, in uh, it is a tool. It is a tool for even sports smuggling. Mabuti kung declared lahat siyang in-import. Ha? Eh? Yan ang lalo na kakapinsala. Yung, <clears throat> ano yun, nag-smuggle pa ng rice. Ha? Eh? Hindi naman lahat ay eh, declared yan. At, uh, nalalagyan ng, ano, tarif. No? So, ganyan. Diyan na totodas yung, ano, yung local uh, rice uh, production at diyan uh, uh, naghihirap ang mamagsaka. At uh, yung ginawang magastos na yung agricultural production dahil sa green revolution, yung, kanya, yung tipo ng rice uh, na tinatanim, alam nyo bago mag green revolution, meron yung kwan eh, develop na rice uh, uh, breed, strain mga Pilipino, uh, Mahusay, pero nandiyan na yung, ano, yung Green Revolution, ginawa nila yung, ano, yung gumawa sila ng rice strain na nangangailangan na maraming, maraming fertilizer, pesticide, matakaw sa tubig, kaya nag-irrigation, mag naging magasos ang production. Kaya madaling mabangkrap ang, ano, yung mga magsasaka na, na pa-independent, ano yan, uh, madaling mabangkrap. At, uh, ngayon, uh, nangyari na yan, yung pagpapataas ng cost of production, pagkatapos na dyan yung pagdagsa ng ano, smuggled at, uh, na, at uh, legally imported rice. Tito, next question would be, uh, some farmers who are forced to produce inedible cash crops, such as tobacco, 
and end up resorting to bungkalan to keep themselves from starving. Yet, this practice is demonized by landowners and the ruling class. Can you clear up exactly why? Ay, oo. Alam niyo nyo, ang magsasaka ay kailangan magsaka at arroyos mamamatay. Ano? At, uh, you know, uh, yung, kung tinan mo yung ano, distribution of values, output values sa uh, kwan, Uh, for agriculture, pinalilit eh. Biro mo 7.4 na lang. Uh, uh, talagang ano yan, na pinapress down, uh, pero may hindi kinukwenta ng mga statisticians at economists. Hindi nila alam. Saka, kinakain nila yung bahagi ng production nila. Uh, hindi, in, porque hindi nakakarating sa palengke, ano yon hindi kinukwenta. Kaya dyan napapaliit yung ano share of uh, uh, value sa GDP, 7.4, biro mo, kagagaling sa 9%, no? Um, ngayon, mga magsasaka, kahit paano, uh, yung, uh, uh, kung yung lupa tuwang-wang, ay yung, uh, alimbawa, yung landlord, Walang interest mag-produce ha? dahil hindi kikita. Ha? Nakita natin yan sa nung dumapa yung ano, rice, yung sugar industry. Eh, gutom yung mga tao. So, uh, magbungkal sila sa sarili nila sa mga tumakas. Pag ganyan din, kapag yung ano, pag lumaban yung mga magsasaka at yung gaganti yung mayaman na In ayaw niya ang magkaran land reform, ayaw niya rin ano, mag magbigay pang gastos eh? Eh, para mag, uh, magtanim. So, yung mga magsasaka, on their own, uh, they organize themselves to uh, produce rice for themselves, at least for themselves. And uh, if they have any extra, they, they sell um, within their scale. Uh, in order to uh, get the money for other necessities, mga para sa debate, etc. So, uh, ganyan nangyayari. Uh, sapilitan ang mga magsasaka. Ganito yan eh. Uh, isipo mo yung pinakamahirap na magsasaka. Yung magsasaka na walang sinasaka. Pagkatapos dumami yung ano, walang, walang sinasaka. No? Nangangaingin yan. Ha? Nang, nangangaingin. Uh, so, somehow the peasants uh, uh, resort. So, pati yung, yung bungkalan, uh, napauso na yan dahil ano eh, malalawak yung lupa ng natitiwang-wang eh. Yes. Um, Alright, should we proceed to the next question? Okay. Tito, um, we are tied up. Next question would be, we are tied up to be import dependent and export oriented with the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trades and the World Trade Organization. Do we aim to junk this agreement and what will happen to our international relations once agricultural revolution happens? Alam ninyo, uh, there are certain crops for export that we can produce. Um, magbago man ang sistema, Matapos ba yung landlord system, ano yun, um, export to earn uh, foreign exchange by which we can buy equipment no? to industrialize the country. Hindi may iwasan yan. Um, pero kailangan may, may planning, may economic planning. So, nga na, mag-apagawa yung tao yung pagkain at yung gamit na, sa mga, mga agricultural products domestically. Uh, Pagkatapos, meron kang pang-export. Ano, para kumita ka. At uh, meron, ano ka, uh, you can import equipment, especially equipment that can produce more equipment. No? Yung you know, capital goods that can produce more capital goods self-reliantly. But somehow you have to get you have to get the uh, income because uh, you cannot get these things you know, free uh, from the world market. Ngayon, under neoliberal policy, naman ang ang problema yan ipapahal sa traditional export crops at hanggang dito kana lang. 
maging konsumidor lang ng mga foreign manufacturers. Hindi ka makapag-industrialize. Ha? Ililimitan ka. Sasabihin, oh, magaling ka sa ganito. Ganitong crap. No? Ito na. O kaya, uh, magpapandar sila ng mga bagong agricultural products. O, oh, rubber plantations, palm oil. Diyan na kayo. Ha? Hayaan ninyo, huwag na ninyong isipin kung may makaka... Uh, kung ano, mababawasan yung kalupaan para sa pagkain. Ganon. So, ay yung uh, neoliberal policy. Kunyan, uh, pagdating sa mga tao, anarchy of poverty and misery, samantalang merong unity of the exploiters using the state. Na? Alam mo yan, kung magsalita yung mga market, uh, propo, ma mga market uh, advocacy, ba? Kala mo, the market decides everything. Government does not... Messes up the economy. No, they use the government and to have their, you know, to have their private plans of profit making, and they don't care about the gulo, ah, the pinsala sa different parts parts of the economy, and the ah ah abot sa sa masa. So ano yon? And while the ruling system, semi-colonial and semi-feudal, continues, amasahan mo, this will be told to produce only certain export crops. Kasi yun lang, ang ambuladas dyan eh, kung kumuha ka ng economics. Oh no, there is the law of... Magtatanim ng kamote. Ay, nandiyan lang ka lang, hanggang kamote ka lang. Mga ngamuti ka sa kamuti, gano'n. So, in the, wala yung kwan, wala yung overall plan to develop the economy in a balanced way. Uh, and to use industrialization as the lead factor and using agriculture as the base to assure food and uh, uh, processing of certain agricultural products within your own country. Yeah, so, yung neoliberal policy, ano yun eh, yung pinat, lalong pinatagilid yung ekonomi. Uh, sa iba ba, sa agriculture, kung yun, pinapa-specialize sa ilan, at saka topsy-turvy, yung production. Pagkatapos sa itaas, yung ano, yung mga private construction, doon bumubuhos ang pautang, at saka sa mga supermarkets, yung mga malls, ganun. Uh, pero yung sariling industrial development ng Philippines, wala. Yung uh, lumulubog sa utang at saka dahil sa uh, palubhang trade and budgetary deficits every year. Sumasama. Ngayon, ang krisis ngayon, yung nagkakautang ng mga gobyerno. At uh, yan ang big bubble that is already the process of bursting. It will be itong uh, <coughs> ang krisis na na ano yun, na Uh, kinasasangkutan yung, uh, yung bursting of the public debt bubble yan ang pinakamatinding krisis ng kapitalismo alright Tito, next question dito um, from our audience from Zoom what would Sir Joma Season would like to say to the Filipino people especially the youth activists in the challenging times for the anti-terrorism bill has been signed by the President oh dapat labanan ng kapatan State terror bill, state terror law na yan. Kasi yung numero one ng terror at mga kasabot niyang terorista sa militar at polis, ano yan, talagang gagawa sila ng malaking pahirap sa sambayan ng Pilipino, lalo na sa kabataan. At ang paghihirap na yan, yung ano, sa ekonomiya, sa kabuhayan, at yung paggamit ng dahas sa anumang signo ng uh, pagpuna sa nasa kapangyarihan, eh, ang kabataan, ano yan, mahalaga sa kanila yung kalayaan na uh, magpahayag at gawin ang kanilang ano, iniisip na dapat gawin para sa kabubuti ng bayan. Ngayon, subuhin mo pati yung karapatan magsalita at uh, sasabihin pag na sa gobyerno, ah, terorist. Ah, 
yang gap. Ano yan? Yung uh, uh, sa pilitan, ang kabataan manindigan at uh, magpalakas ng kilusan. Yung palakasin nila ang mga uh, organisadong pwersa nila. Uh, iba ito ibang kuha naman, organisasyon. May organisasyon ng, ng kabataang estudyante, kabataang manggagawa, magsasaka, at yung mga pinagsama-sama ano, yung comprehensive youth organization tulad ng anak bayan, tulad ng kabataang makabayan na nasa underground. Ngayon, pagkatapos, uh, yung uh, palagi ko, maraming mapipilitan na ano, yung kuhan, kapag um, yung masyadong uh, sinusupil na yung kalayaan sa above ground, dadami yung sasama sa underground at sa sandatang pakikibaka. Uh, sa naririnig ko eh, yung anong araw, ilang mga 1971, Uh, mga kabataang makabayan sa kanila, mas mabuti ang mag-underground ka na kaysa mahuli at mapatay. Ano? At mabuti, larong mabuti kung may dala ka ng, ano, ng barel kahit na paltek o kaya may, kung mag-ulang mo may barel, <laughs> isa naman mo na para madali kang mag-integrate mag sa NPA. No? <laughs> so, maraming gagawa niyan. At uh, larong, ano, larong uh, uh, magkakaroon ng uh, labanan Uh, ang ibubunga ng terorismo ni Duterte, ano yon? Counter-terrorism, o ibig sabihin, revolusyon. Laman sa kontra-revolusyon. Uh, so, ano yan? Alam na ng kabataan ang gagawin. May, sa kasaysayan ng kabataan, alam na nila ang kasaysayan na puro kabataan yung revolusyon, mga mga general Pag ano yun, mga 20 years old, naging general na, ay, ibig sabihin talagang ano, mananalo na ang revolusyon pag dumami yung Kasi pag dumami yung puwersa, ah, yung mga mga listong uh, aktivista, naging general yan. Eh. Di ba mga bata yan, si Andres Bonifacio, uh, Gregorio del Pilar. No? Uh, pero ano yan, uh, importante may diwang, ano, may diwang mapanlaban na modest. No? Pag dito sa people, serving the people, uh, modest like the, uh, sabi ni Mao, ano? quoting from Lucian, no? mapagkumbaba. Ha? Pero laban sa ano, kalaban tigre, no? uh, yung lalaban ng gusto. Uh, yan, lilitaw mga, ano, mga maraming revolusyonaryo dahil sa ano, matinding pangapi, dahil sa terorismo ng Estado at pasismo uh, na lantaran. Tito, next a question would be, what can you say about the killings of farmers that are happening in different regions done by the Panginoong May Lupa? Ay, ano yan? Basta klaba, yan nga. Dagami yan, no? magpagpatay sa mga magsasaka at yung mga katutubo uh, na basically magsasaka naman. Uh, yung dadami yan. Uh, yung uh, parang may lisensya yan eh. Yung state terrorism law. Ano yan? Uh, lisensya yan para mga resto mag, uh, mag, uh, mag uh, uh, pumatay at uh, magbomba ng mga community magpalayas sa mga uh, lupain para agawin ng mga ano mga sakim yung kalupaan alright uh, tito next question would be uh ang Coco Levi Fund at bakit nananawagan ang magsasaka na ibalik ito sa kanila? Hmm. Hmm. Yung Coco Levi Fund ay kinulekta yan. Uh, uh, yung, uh, ang utak yan, si Danding Kuhangot sa si Marcos. Si Danding, uh, yung nagmay-ari ng isang isla sa Palawan at doon uh, inupisan yung coconut strain yung seedlings na daw ikakalat daw yun sa mga magsasaka so yun ang ano yun, yun ang uh, um, isang dahilan kung bakit ah, kailangan uh, mag-replanting at uh, in exchange for that yung ang uh, estado kakadeg ng tax sa mga magsasaka. Pagkatapos yung Coco Levy, na yung Coco Levy fan, ginamit ni, ni Marcos at ni Dandeng 
uh, para magtayo ng bangko pagkatapos uh, para ano yun uh, ut- uh, uh, ano utuin no gawing ututo si Enrique Sobel uh, siya yung ano eh yun sila yung ginamit na instrumento para maagaw nila yung ano yung uh, yung San Miguel Brewery yun ang big price eh pinakamalaking ano comprador farm na ano nakuha ni Marcos sa si Dandeng pero ultimately lino, lino ko ni Dandeng si ano Marcos uh, nasa pangalan ni Dandeng lahat siya eh. so ginamit yung Coco Levy Farm ng pangtayo ng uh, Coco Group at pag uh, at pag uh, pamibili ng malalaking kompanya tulad ng San Miguel okay so yung ay uh, alam mo no Ah, pa pa ta wala. Hello uh, dito. Sorry. Sorry for the technical ano, difficulties. Yes. Alam mo yung pamilyang ko ang ko, alam na lang ko. Ah, uh, mayayaman 'yan pero si Dandeng nasa Four Wing. Uh, ang kanyang bahagi ng uh, bahagi ng ano, pag-aari ng mangkuang ko sa Paniki, yung uh, su- yung sugar mill sa Maliki. At uh, may limitasyon ng lupa doon na kanila, no? Ingit na ingit siya sa mga pinsan niya na naka, nakabili ng ano, nakabili ng Asyenda Lusita. Dahil ano, itong Nino Aquino na dating nasyonalista ng Liberal Party para si Bakapagal, yung ano, istorya ha, ito ng mga hayop na mayayaman. Uh, <laughs> yung So, uh, ito niya, uh, lalo na pag Australian horse. Oh my God. Hello? <laughs> Nag-istorbo sa akin ko na Ano? Si Jello po. Anong hindi na? Ano? Naririnig? Hello, Tito. Sorry for the text. Interference sa tayo. Hello? Hello, Tito. Naririnig nyo kami? Yes, hello. Narinig ko kayo. Hello. Sorry, um, sorry to our audience. As for this technical difficulties due to the internet connection. And we are back. Um, should we proceed now, Tito, to the next question? Kat uh, hindi pa yata tapos. Hindi tapos pa. Na na ba kayo about Coco Levy? Kajoma. Kajoma. Hmm. Ano? Tapos na po kayo about Coco Levy. Ah, no no. Coco Levy. Eh, ano na na coconut farmers. Pagkatapos, ginamit lang nila Marcos at uh, Kuhuanko para mamili. Ha? Magtayo ng bangko at mamili ng San Miguel at iba pang kumpanya. Pagkatapos, uh, yung, uh, eh, yung mga magsasaka, pagsak ni Marcos, nagreklamo. Eh, yung akala namin na para sa, pa, para sa ano yun, para ma-improve uh, production at ang kabuhayan nila. So, um, nag-claim sila. Kaya ang ultimo niyan, yung ano, yung a portion, 20% yata, o 25%. Is, uh, talaga lang kay Juan Go, sasabihin nila, kapera niya talaga. You know? Kasi itong mga nasa Supreme Court, mga suhulan niyan. Uh, makita mo yung mga plunderer eh, lusot lalo sa panahon ni Estrada. Yung nababayaran niya mga mga ano yan, mga nasa Supreme Court. Uh, tapos, yung, uh, yung isang bahagi dapat ibalik eh, sa mga magsasak, mga coconut farmers. Wala. Ang, uh, sa, uh, yung sa na administrasyon, wala. So, uh, yung ano, linoko, yung mga coconut far, uh, farmers, pinagnakawal lang yung ano uh, fund at hanggang ngayon ano deprived ang mga pesa 
about uh, coconut farmers. All right. Okay, Tito, um, I think um, that uh, we are already down to our last question. To our audience, thank you so much for sending your uh, questions to us and participating with the discussion. Ano? So, Tito, next uh, last question would be, does Mao model of balanced economic development in his Article 10 major relationship still valid um, today for the people's protractive uh, democratic revolution? Oh, valid pa yung teachings ni Mao tungkol sa uh, major relationships. At saka tungkol sa ekonomiya, ganito yan eh. Tungkol sa ekonomiya, yung agriculture is the base of the economy. To make sure na may pagkain at uh, may ma raw materials for processing. Pero may li ang lead factor ay magtayo ka ng ano, industriya capable of producing capital goods, no? yung uh, meron kang steel at kung mga ano uh, major ano major uh, uh, industries sa metallurgy uh, meron kang basic chemicals pero uh, yung on the old Soviet model ni Stalin make sure that there is a bridging factor yung as soon as possible you develop, ano, at the same time, you must develop your ano, light industry. Uh, kasi yung light industry would provide, uh, would, would uh, manufacture things uh, useful to the people, immediately useful. At saka, yan ang madaling bilhin ng mga tao. Diyan, ano, um, diyan lalago. Ha? Yung, ano, palengke at ekonomiya. Uh, uh, yung light industry would provide the, ano, yung mga equipment for uh, households, no? Uh, farming or for, you know, kitchen use. And, uh, at uh, yan ang nagmamanufacture. Uh, mga pagkain, na dilata, etc. So, yung intermediate uh, is the build bridge. Kasi pag uh, doon sa heavy industry ka lang, ay ano yan, um, mag, may yung kung... Um, Ang, ta ang pakinabang ng tao, hindi makikita pag gano'n. Yung uh, umapapabalaan kung para yung heavy investment mo sa heavy industry. Pero uh, you cannot industrialize without the you know, heavy, indust heavy and basic industries as the lead factor. Lead factor yon Pero kailangan may intermediate factor ka na, no? uh, which produces things immediately useful uh, to people in their... Um, uh, by way of consumption and uh, uh, production according to their uh, to limited scales. All right. Um, thank you so much, Tito, for teaching us and having with us today and um, teaching us about the conditions of the workers. And uh, we have learned a lot. No? And to our audience who participate and send their questions and um, tackle with us, on the discussion. Thank you so much. Uh, dyan po nagtatapos ang ating discussion sa espesyal na kursong masa on the land problem, peasants, cl peasant class, and agrarian revolution. So stand by next week for our next discussion. Espesyal na kursong masa pa rin. Pero sabay-sabay natin naman talakayin ang problema na kinakaharap ng mga kababaihan sa ating bansa. Together with our guests, so Tita Connie from um, International Women's Association. So that will be on July 12, 2020. Same time and same place. Um, to make sure, note this on your calendars and catch updates on our Facebook group, ND Line Online, and our Facebook page, Anak Bayan Europa, for updates. So, huwag kalimutan mag-like at mag-imbita upang sumali sa ating makabuluhan at nakamumulat na talakayan dito lang sa National Democratic Online School Serie with Tito Jo. Muli, maraming salamat po sa pakikibahagi. Ako po si Kasamang Christ, kasama si Tito Jo. Tito Jo, do you have anything to say to our audience? Meron daw po kayo sasabihin. Expected na magsalam. Opo, meron. Ah. Ah, ako po ay naman madam na sisiyahan ako na ano, na nagawa natin ng uh, uh, webinar na ito. Uh, samantalang uh, uh, may pangangailangan na magtuon tayo sa 
uh, state terrorism law ni Duterte at you know uh, tulad din ng pansin yung ano yung uh, pangangamkam ng China sa exclusive economic zone natin no may mga ano yan eh may competing shows of force kayo sa ano South China Sea between the US and uh, China uh, nagkaroon tayo ng pagkakataon na uh, napag-aralan ng isang mag- uh, mahalagang subject alam ko na marami sa mga uh, overseas Filipinos uh, nag-abroad para maghanap ng trabaho. At uh, usually, yung low-level jobs na nakukuha nila. At uh, kung minsan, yung may mga undocumented, uh, they work for, even for middle-class families uh, host, uh, where the wives have to work. And yung ng trabaho sa Pilipinas ano, nag-abroad. Uh, ngayon, uh, yung, yan ang resulta ng neoliberal policy, lopsided yung economy sa Pilipinas, nagpunta abroad, ngayon, uh, for a while, may mga parang ad jobs ka makukuha. Ano, yun, parang ad jobbers eh. Lalo ba ko yung nasa cleaning, it's uh, kung ano mga low-level services. Um, ngayon, abay, ang pagkakaroon ng... Uh, Economic crisis ngayon sa mga developed countries na worse than the Great Depression. So, tapos by COVID-19, marami ngayon na uwi sa Pilipinas. Ngayon, pagbalik nalang sa Pilipinas, wala naman mananap ng trabaho. Puputok! Ha? Puputok ang Pilipinas niya. <laughs> Bukte, maintindihan nila kung uh, ano ang main force ng revolusyon. Uh, kasi ito, ganito eh. Um, Marami nag abroad na basta nakapag-high school, may working English. Nakapag-abroad, no? Nakapag-remedyo ng pasahe. Okay? Uh, ngayon, <laughs> pag, pag napilitan sila umuwi, at wala rin silang madadat na isang iniwanan nila dahil walang trabaho, wala, lalo walang trabaho sa Pilipinas, buputok ang revolusyon. Kaya importante na alam nila kung saan panig sila. Kaya, at uh, maunawa nila mga dahilan ng mga problema ng sambalang Pilipino at gano'ng kahalaga ang sumanib, ang uh, pumanig sa uring magsasaka. Uh, ano man kataas ang, ang antas ng ideologya at politika, hindi ka makapag-revolusyon kung hindi ka uh, magbabatay sa lakas ng main force, pangunahing pwersa ng revolusyon. Ganong kahalaga ang uh, no, pag-aaral na ginawa natin ngayon. Ah, ako, eh, kuan, kinu- sinasabi ko ito palang tuunan yung punto na aral na ito, hindi lamang ano, yan, para to satisfy ourselves intellectually. Pero, may kinalaman sa ano, sa saan tayo papanig at kung ano magagawa natin para sa uh, pagpa- pagbabago ng sistema sa Pilipinas. Kaya, Ang hanan ko eh kuan ko anong anong uh, napulot ninyong uh, aral sa ar at kung ang uh, mapapalawig ninyong kalaban eh uh, uh, umasa ko magagamit ninyo uh, para sa, para kayo ay makalawok sa kilusang pagbabago para ma hindi lang si Duterte, kundi mabago ang sistema ng lipunan sa Pilipinas. Maraming salamat po, Tito, sa um, iyong morning to, um, to me. Uh, maraming salamat po ulit sa ating pag-again uh, sa lahat ng bahagi. Mapagpalayang gabi po para sa ating lahat. Ang pamumuno 
paz.